He lived over 1,400 years ago, in a world without telescopes, computers, or even the number zero. He saw what no one else dared to see, that nothing could be a number. His name was Brahmagupta, and he didn't just write equations, he rewrote reality. In the ancient town of Bilamala, among sand, stars, and sacred rituals, a child was born. His world was filled with prayers and prophecy, not problems and equations. But this boy would one day change how we think about everything, from zero to the sky. His name was Brahmagupta. His early lessons were filled with ancient verses, gods, and sacred sound. He memorized hymns and holy texts, the foundation of Brahmin education. But something else caught his mind, numbers. They weren't part of the chant, but they were part of him. In the silence of the courtyard, he began to think for himself. Shapes and shadows became puzzles. He saw that stars moved in patterns, like the triangles and circles he drew. And slowly, the world stopped being sacred and started making sense. The visitors spoke of a place beyond Bilamala, a place where numbers ruled the skies. Ujjain, the heart of India's astronomical wisdom. To others, they were just wandering monks. But to Brahmagupta, they were messengers of destiny. He didn't have a blackboard or books, but he had pebbles, rope, and time. Every new number brought a new rule to learn. He wasn't playing, he was discovering and he didn't even know yet how far it would take him. His family wanted a priest, a boy to recite mantras, not measure orbits. But Brahmagupta wasn't rebelling, he was reaching for something bigger than tradition. This wasn't astrology, this was real observation. The moon's light danced in water and whispered secrets. He wasn't guessing anymore, he was calculating the universe had begun to answer him back. Some students are told what to become. Others are shown what they already are. That day, Brahmagupta wasn't given permission. He was given purpose. And with it, the child of Pilamala began his journey to the stars. Brahmagupta had reached Ujjain, the scientific heart of India. Here, math met the stars in giant machines of bronze and wood. He was no longer the clever boy from Pilamala. He was now one mind among many, and he had something to prove. He respected Aryabhata, but he didn't always agree. Some of Aryabhata's numbers didn't match the skies he had studied. The earth rotating, he wasn't convinced. But instead of shouting disagreement, he began to rewrite the universe his way. Night after night, he watched the heavens move in circles. He realized this wasn't chaos. It was rhythm. The stars weren't random. They followed rules. And if nature followed rules, so could numbers. He didn't invent the idea of zero, but he did something no one had done. He gave it power. He said zero wasn't just a gap. It was a number, like any other. And now the universe had a new rule. For the first time, negative numbers and zero had rules. He showed how to subtract a debt and turn it into a gain. He showed how zero behaves when added, subtracted, and even multiplied. These weren't guesses. They were the laws of numbers. Some thought his ideas were dangerous. Zero as a number, negative values, madness, they said. Others saw genius, a door opening to a new world of calculation. Either way, Brahmagupta had their attention. After years of work, the universe had a book. 
Its name meant the opening of the universe. In its pages, rules, patterns, and the logic of the skies. He wasn't just observing anymore, he was declaring. One sentence changed everything. Not a symbol, a number, not empty, full of power. And for the first time in history, Zero had rules. Brahmagupta had opened the universe, and the world would never close it again. He didn't stay quiet. In front of scholars and priests, Brahmagupta challenged Aryabhata, the most respected astronomer of his time. He claimed Aryabhata's math didn't match the heavens. And though he spoke with respect, the fire in his words shocked everyone listening. Not everyone believed numbers should rule the stars. Astrologers, who mixed magic with astronomy, said Brahmagupta was going too far. They feared his math would take power away from priests. To them, numbers couldn't explain the will of the heavens. Brahmagupta's ideas split the world of learning. Some believed he had revealed powerful truth. Others mocked him, calling zero a trick, not a number. Even in science, belief and reason can pull in different directions. Years later, he wrote again, this time faster, more urgently. He called it Kandakadiyaka, a bite-sized tool for practical astronomy. It was for calendars, eclipses, star maps, things people used every day. But behind the neat tables was a storm of worry. Far from India, Brahmagupta's ideas found a new life. Scholars like Al-Biruni translated his work into Arabic. Zero, negative numbers, and star tables crossed deserts and languages. A new chapter had begun, not in India, but in the Islamic Golden Age. Disaster came not from debate, but from wind, fire, and time. Scrolls were lost, soaked, burned. Whole chapters of Brahmasfuta Siddhanta vanished into storm clouds. The world almost forgot who had given it zero. But ideas, once born, never die easily. Across the desert, a spark survived. A damaged scroll, a curious mind, and the beginning of a second life for Zero. Brahmagupta's battle wasn't over. It was just beginning. Brahmagupta's work traveled across lands, in the Islamic world, scholars translated his books into Arabic. They used his rules for zero, negative numbers, and algebra. His ideas began shaping the science of a new civilization. Hundreds of years later, a man named Fibonacci learned from Arabic texts. He brought Indian numbers, including zero, to Europe. Traders and scholars were shocked at how much easier math became. Without Brahmagupta's rules, Fibonacci's work might not have existed. We already have a full video on Fibonacci and how he brought the numbers to Europe. You'll find it linked in the card above and in the description below. Today we use zero everywhere, in computers, rockets and science. It's part of every calculation in engineering and space travel. Without it, there would be no modern technology. Brahmagupta's ideas, once doubted, now power the digital age. The Greeks and Romans were brilliant, but their numbers had limits. They didn't have zero, and that made real arithmetic difficult. Brahmagupta's system was clear, simple, and powerful. That's why the world chose it. In schools today, children learn to count from one to zero. But few know the story behind it. Brahmagupta isn't just a name in a book. He's the reason they understand what nothing really means. Some still argue, did Brahmagupta really invent zero? The symbol came earlier, but the rules did not. He turned a blank space into a number with power. That's the true invention. India remembers. Brahmagupta's name is in schools, statues and science awards. 
He's part of the nation's pride in its ancient knowledge. What began in a dusty village now inspires millions. From the dust of Bilamala to the edges of space, one idea, one man made the impossible calculable. And that idea was zero. Hello and welcome. We're excited to share some great news. Our new website is officially live. You can now visit us anytime at www.miguromedia.com. This site is designed especially for students, teachers, and curious minds who want everything we've created. Documentaries, articles, references, and learning tools all in one place. So whether you're looking to revisit a topic, find further reading, or use our materials in the classroom, our website will be your go-to hub. Again, that's migoromedia.com, your space for engaging, well-researched learning content. Feel free to explore, bookmark it, and share it with fellow educators and learners.